Hi everybody! Today we are doing the unboxing of the new game Anno Domini 1666. But before we jump in, remember to hit the subscribe button for a lot of great fencing content. So here is the game. It is a really heavy box. So I found it on the Kickstarter some time ago and I bought it with my own money and the game arrived maybe over a month ago I guess um, but I didn't have even a bit of free time to open it for you guys so as you can see it still have foiling I didn't do even a little quick sneak peek to see what's inside and I'm so excited because I want to finally play it and see if it's cool or not. The game is created by um, a Polish team, which is also a great bonus for me, because I think it's important to, you know, support a local creators and give them some money so they can create even more great stuff. And also it's ecological to, you know, order from a place which is close to you. So yeah, this is another great thing. And what uh, what else I wanted to say to you? Oh yeah, I know. Uh, I think before we open it, uh, we should see what the creators want to say about the game. Here we have the description. Leopold I, Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, dies suddenly on December 31st, 1665. European monarchs send their envoys to Vienna to participate in the coming election. These envoys, however, are accompanied by teams of hand-picked men and women who will strive to accomplish goals that cannot be attempted at court in the light of day. The streets and alleys of Vienna are backdrop for the clash of some of the most famous fictional characters of the 17th century. At the same... At the same time, dark powers, which are growing stronger and stronger, see these dire times as an opportunity, opportunity, opportunity to cause more chaos in Europe and drench it in the rivers of blood. Have you appreciated my beautiful British accent, which I tried to mimic? By the way, this is my new favorite fencing mug. Yeah, because, you know, I noticed that there is actually lack of cool fencing mugs on the market. So I've decided that I have to make my own so I can be, you know, energized from the morning and have good... good beginning of the day so this is the very handsome man who also holds uh, a foil actually this is a lovely six pack and he says wanna fence so you know he invites me to fence with him and this is nice and i also have a version of a woman um, which is mostly not clothed and she's also quite pretty and I gave it to my best fencing friends. Maybe I will show it to you some other time. But coming back to the game, let's admire the box first. You didn't notice anything at all. It's not like I have a fake light to my cat so it looks stronger. <laughs> not at all. It's just a natural lightning provided by a create a designer <laughs> but the box black with a 16 anno, anno domini 1666 on the front and also the same design is on the sides and on the back back, back on the back uh, we have a musket, musketeer and also some pr and the preview of what is inside of the box, but I don't want to look at it because I want to be surprised. And the description, uh, which I just um, have read to you. I just realized that I have 
no idea if I had ordered the game in English version or in Polish version, so I guess we will be surprised. Okay, I open it. Ready? I'm so ready. I have uh, my really fancy knife for that. Oh, the sound. I just have to be careful not to destroy anything. Okay. Now I will manage with my hands. Be prepared for a lot of terrible noises of foil. Yay! Finally! The game was sitting on a shelf teasing me for the whole month. She was whispering, open me, open, just look inside, no one will notice. But I know that you would. Okay, file out of the way. Oh, okay, I will open it and then I'm not looking yet. So you can see it first before I do. But I guess there is not, not, nothing really to see. <laughs> Let's try again, like a professional unboxing YouTuber. <laughs> really nice uh, sponge layer, so your game won't uh, be destroyed during the transportation. So let's try again. This is what you can find. Oh, there is a nice woman who is I'm looking for a nice way to say prostitute but I don't know it in English okay so if you know some words which you can say when you want to be elegant write them down in the comments <laughs> courtesan Cour courtesan okay Wow, I'm really impressed because I've never ha had a skirmish game, skir skirmish, skirmish game. So I don't know if it's typical, so you can let me know or not. But the the whole inside of the box has this sponge, and the figures are placed inside, so not nothing breaks. Foam, not sponge. Subtle difference. But you knew what I meant. Okay, what should I take out first? Okay, so what we have inside? Two big decks. Two small decks. Some stands for the figures. And some ringy things. I have no idea what it is, but some sort of markers maybe. We'll see. And the third deck. And the last but not least, we have a lot of figures inside. So let's take them out. Almost there, two rows out of three. Oh, okay, finished. Mm, I don't think there is anything under the foam, but I will just check to be sure. Okay, I was totally wrong. There is a lot of thing, things under the foam. <laughs> oh, Dominika, you are so brilliant. You could just take the box into your hand and you would notice that, it's st that this is still freaking heavy and that you, that you st still don't have a board and you need a board to play a board game, right? <laughs> okay, so... The foam is out. Oh, there is a lot of things in this box. Okay, so here we have some sort of tokens and elements of the board. Ah, don't leave it yet. And here we have, guess what? More of these things. What else we have here? A board, some books, manual and scenarios probably, some 
sheets of papers. Okay. Uh, a big board. Really heavy. And another big board. Huh, and that, my dear people, is finally all. Empty and light box. The game cost around exactly the game cost 75 dollars and i bought it because when i saw it on kickstarter i thought come on historical but fictional game with main characters who wield rapiers and saber it is something i have to get and i have to show you so let's take a closer look to all these goodies here so here we have the decks the big decks <laughs> One is bluish, one is orangish, <laughs> kind of orange. Um, and yeah, it's basically, it's like a normal, normal uh, card decks. So it has numbers and, and the, the figures, I guess it, it's how they are called in four col colors. And is this one the same? Yeah, this one is the same. Uh, the quality is, is, is really good. The card is thick and it has a nice texture of old paper. And the colors are cool. We have schools, hearts, skulls, not schools, skulls, like this piece of your head. Now I forgot goblets. Yeah, goblets. And this thing, which I have totally no idea how to say it in English, Horseshoes? Yes, it's a horseshoe! Ta-da! Playing computer games pays off. Smaller decks. Hmm, okay, so in this deck we have pictures of, of stuff, of equ equ equipment your character can have. We have the arm, forearm protectors, saber, Mm, leather jacket or pistol but yeah the the answer is i have my game in polish uh, and i guess it's a good thing because for example there is something which i don't know the name for it even in polish it's a new word for me and it's it's called forkiet and from the description it looks like like a monopod on which you put your fire firearm fire firearm i'm thinking people but yeah yeah this one is also really pretty i like the pictures and there we don't have a problem here at least from the first glance which i sometimes sometimes have in card games that someone was so concerned in making beautiful pictures and beautiful cards that forgot about um, usable, usability and sometimes you have such a beautiful cards that you don't really that you can't see the numbers and you spend five minutes looking for it from the close distance so yeah this is a big big plus for example in the castles of B burgundy it is really great game and i really like the that on board you have every information needed but it, it has a lot of elements so um, a lot of details on the board and you have to have a very close look to see some things we'll see how it will be during the the game itself because i may be totally wrong i will tell you it all in the review okay the third deck um, only one with uh, yeah this this two has the same back yeah and here we have the uh, cards of characters again pretty pictures it looks a bit like from computer game I like it I think it's time to tell you something more about main characters of the game we have two groups one of which are musketeers 
musketeers and the other one uh, the main protagonist of the trilogy by Henryk Sienkiewicz. I think we all know Three Musketeers, written by Alexander Dumas, um, but just in case you are not familiar, uh, it takes place in the 17th century, uh, in, in France of course, and we have the main character, which is um, called D'Artagnan, who goes to Paris and want to be a musketeer. Uh, he has some difficulties with that at the beginning, but he meets three most uh, renowned musketeers, which are called Athos, Porthos and Aramis, and I guess we will find them somewhere in this pile of figures, and then I will say something more about them, I guess. But I think that's all for about that, because mm, most people know that story. But what about heroes from the trilogy of Henryk Sienkiewicz? It's some Polish literature you probably heard nothing about in your whole life. It's time to change that. Stop smiling like a child. Time for cheeks relaxation. Uh, okay, the, um, the trilogy. The trilogy follows the um, dramatized version of main events in Polish 17th century history. It interwines fiction and fantasy. And it's quite cool. It has three, three tomes. The um, first one is called with fire and sword, which is a really cool name. The second one, the deluge, and the third one, the mm, the colon Sir Mike Sir Sir Vodiovsky or Colonel Vodiovsky or the third one. There was there were three different translations. The third one, the fire in the step, exactly. Yeah, um, and there are stories full of Polish noblemen's and sabers. And the important thing about that, a bit of background for you, the story was created by Alfor when Polish state uh, didn't exist, because Poland was divided between Russia, Austria and Germany. So uh, he wrote this story to strengthen the Polish national spirit and to give people strength to fight with the occupational uh, forces, with the enemy but because he didn't want censorship to notice that fact, he placed the whole story in a time when Poland fought different enemy than Russia. That's why it's in 17th century. Okay, so here are the figurines. Group of French guys, Polish guys, some city guards, again prostitutes and some other folks. Here we have Mm, Aramis, which are my favorite from the Musketeers. He has um, er, the rapier and the, le the levak, <laughs> the, the dagger, which is in Polish called levak, that's why it mixed in my head. Uh, a rapier and a dagger, of course. He's standing in Fabrice stance, stance, but I guess it's that time, so it's quite accurate. And he's my favorite from the Musketeers because my school, which in which I train, is called Aramis Fencing School. So, um, yeah, and it's of course a totally sensible thing because Aramis was not only the coolest, but also the most ambitious one. And as a kid he wanted, wanted to be a priest, but he was caught with a married woman in very obvious situation and he was thrown away from her house and then he decided that he will go to the best fencer sword master in the town in the city and he will learn fencing only because he wanted revenge so this is the person you want to admire because in one year he became a great swordsman and he killed the guy which insulted him. So you can learn fencing in one year. You just need the best swordsman in your town uh, or in your country and a whole year of free time because you are a noble. Easy peasy. Yeah, so that was Aramis and now to the 
Poles. Here we have <laughs> you will love these names. Here we have Jan Skrzetuski, which is the um, main character of the first book. He was a lieutenant of a Husari and he he was in love in a girl with a girl, which and she promised him her hand in marriage. But um, this whole story was. Uh, in time when in Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth there was a, re a rebellion of Cossacks, which is which was called um, Chmielnicki uprising, and one of these Cossacks named Bohun uh, kidnapped his beloved girl because he was in love with her. So poor Skrzetuski, he, which who who is described as a very handsome fella, have to of course win her back. Mm, what else? We have here the... Yeah, this is the one. Jerzy Michał Wołodyjowski, <laughs> which is also, you can call him just a colonel Wołodyjowski. He was a colonel of dragoons and he was uh, a protagonist of the third book. He was also known as a little knight because he was a very, of a very small posture. Posture figure, he was very small, and because of that, he, uh, as a young boy, his father told him, son, you are f***ing small, you have to learn how to fight, because you will be bullied your whole life. <laughs> and his son did as his father advised him, and that way he became the finest fencer in the whole country. And also he was a great, uh, he was a master tactician. Here, yeah, so another person worth admiring. He was great, especially in Saber. And this is the part of this video when I finally have to say that there is one problem with this game, only with this basic, um, basic set you can buy. And of course only for me, because there is no figure, no, no mm, representation for my favorite character from the trilogy. There is no Andrzej Kmicic, who was a character from the second book, the Delic, because uh, the, the title is because that in that time in Poland there was an uh, invasion of Sweden, uh, which was called the Delic, and the Kmicic is just the best because he's typical Polish nobleman, he's unruly, yet patriotic. He's a bad boy in which a girl can fall in love. <sighs> but no, no sign of Kmicic here. I just checked it and he's in another box which you can buy for extra money, uh, which is called Cossacks and Ottomans, I think. So, nothing which can't be fixed. The boards are really well made, it is really thick and I don't think it will mm, be destroyed uh, soon. And here you can see the, the docks, I don't know, the, the river bank with some buildings and all of these boards are double-sided. So, I think the game, the game promises a lot of possibilities, so let's hope um, this is true. Okay, overall thoughts. The game is really well made, you can really see and feel the quality. Someone, the creators, really put a lot of effort and a lot of heart in it and you can see it. Um, the quality is worth its, its price, that's for sure. So let's hope that the game itself, when we play it for the first time, that it will match the first impression, because if it does, I will be really, really happy and it will be the game I will play many times. Mm, and yeah, can't wait to, to try it. Because I ordered this game on the Kickstarter, I also received a lot of really pretty box with add-ons, so a lot of things inside. Let me know if you'd be interested of uh, to see unboxing of these things too and what do you think about the game would you be interested to play that it also have english version so you can you can try 
uh, if you want or you think that you maybe you are ex experienced in skirmish games and you see already that it will be a disaster i don't know for my uh, inexperienced eye it looks quite cool uh, and also do you have any uh, advice for a novice who just start her adventure with that sort of board games okay guys that's all for now i hope you like this video um, and yeah remember to subscribe my channel turn on the notifications and also let me know if you like my fencing mug uh, or maybe you can't write that because it would turn out that you are gay but on the other hand we are all very acceptable and we support all people with all their preferences so write whatever you want in the comments and yeah write also if you'd like to see the review of my first game love you bye